Grad school professor rejects my paper, then tries to pass it off as his own work. You won't believe how I got revenge. Some years back, I decided that I wanted to switch to working as a professor. I have always believed that teaching is my life's profession and at the time, I was already a high school teacher but I wanted to get my master's degree, a doctorate, and become a college professor. I have always loved literature because of how it helps us see the world and understand humans from different perspectives and at some point, my philosophical explanations and analysis of high school literature were starting to confuse my poor students. I decided then that it was time for an upgrade. Left to me, I never would have taught in a high school. I found high schoolers very annoying, whiny, and maybe as they should be, childish. I also knew just how mean students were to teachers in high school and I didn't want to have that experience. When I started to hear the kids call me nicknames and giggle and exchange funny faces in my class, I just knew I wanted to get out of there. Generally, I believe that college was a place where my unique perspective on life and literature would be appreciated better. I spoke to my aunt who taught a course on body anatomy at a university in the city and told her about my plans to teach in a university too. While she encouraged me to pursue my dreams, she was a bit concerned about how I was going to be able to afford tuition and all of that. Getting a master's degree can be very time-consuming, she said. If you want to get a job as a professor, you must demonstrate your academic excellence and that means finishing up with very good grades. I shrugged and said, I can do that. I did very well in college and I did not doubt that I'd make good grades in graduate school. I like your confidence but how is that going to work with your full-time job as a teacher? If you want to do very well, you must be willing to quit your job. I can't. I need the money to survive. Have you considered asking your mom and dad? I decided I was going to do just that. My parents squeezed out a lot of money for my college education and were kind of disappointed when I went on to become a high school teacher. I figured telling them that I was now back to my senses and wanted to be a college professor would excite them and make them give me a loan at least. No way. That was my mom's response when I told her about my plans to go to graduate school. What? There is no way your dad and I are giving you that money. You heard your mother, son. Listen, your dad and I are retiring next year, all we want right now is a big vacation after our retirement and enough money to take good care of ourselves but it's a loan. You're going to have to find another way. I felt bad that my parents turned me down but I did not resent them. My parents had done the best they could do for my older sister and me. They ensured we got our first college degrees and made sure that they provided for us enough that we didn't have to get extra jobs in school. I got jobs at different points in college but it was to afford certain luxuries and buy gifts for my girlfriend. About a month later, as the deadline for registration drew near, my dad called me. One of his friends who was a retired professor knew a literature professor who needed a teaching assistant and I was perfect for the job. You may also get to be directly employed by the school and maybe even make tenure in a short while, my dad said. Thank you, dad. I promise I'll make you proud. I went for the teaching assistant interview after arming myself with enough knowledge about the professor I was supposed to work with. From what I heard and read about him, he was the kind of person who enjoyed hearing people's different perspectives. He was not a rigid teacher at all and didn't mind his students holding contrary opinions. He also didn't like when they echoed his opinions back to him, he encouraged everyone to form and hold on to their own solid opinions. I was glad when I learned all that about him. That was the kind of professor I wanted to be anyway so it gladdened my heart to know that that kind of person could be my mentor. I went in for the interview and showed up as my most confident, authentic self. I got the job and was to resume work after three weeks, I needed the three weeks to inform my then employers at the high school that I was leaving, I resumed graduate school shortly after and resumed duties as the teaching assistant of one of my professors. Since we already had a relationship, I chose him as my preferred supervisor for my master's thesis. After I started working for him, I noticed how informal he was. He wasn't the kind of person to keep work relationships strictly formal, he would invite me for dinner with his family, his wife and stepdaughter, while I loved his stepdaughter, his wife was sort of standoffish and would speak to me in a condescending tone sometimes. I didn't bother about it though because she spoke to her husband in that tone too plus rumor had it that she wore the pants in their marriage since she made more money. Also, she kept calling me by a name that wasn't mine but sounded similar to mine, whenever I corrected her, she'd shrug and just go on to say whatever she wanted to. My professor was nice to everyone but something just felt off about his family, even about him. He was just extremely nice to everyone and he went out of his way to do things for others. In my experience, people who do that have something to hide. I knew he wasn't nearly as nice and sweet as everyone thought he was when I submitted a proposed topic for my master's thesis. This is an unusual topic. It is certainly something I'd love to read. She permitted me to go on and write the abstract and introductory part for his approval. I went on to do research, read books, and spent so much time on topics that were related to the proposed topic. When I was finished with the abstract, I gave it to him for his review. A few weeks later, he informed me that he'd read my abstract and the introductory part but thought the topic was a bit too unconventional and might upset people. I was surprised because my professor was the kind of person who loved and enjoyed exploring aspects of literature that people hardly ever touched on, but since he was my supervisor and boss, I figured I'd just agree with him. So, I didn't push it. Instead, I went on to choose a different topic. 
I chose a different topic but he rejected that too. You must be careful about the stuff you write on. People hate too much change, they hate to be called out like this I didn't see how that topic was too far out of line but I accepted his suggestion to change the topic and I did that anyway. As my professor's teaching assistant, he sometimes lets me use his computer to compile the essays and assignments from his undergraduate students into a single file so he can easily access them. One afternoon, I was doing my usual compilation when I noticed an email from an academic journal I'd always hoped I'd publish my work in the future. Usually, I'd never have checked the mail because it was my boss's private email, not an email from one of his students, but I noticed that the email heading carried the topic of the first topic I proposed to my professor. The topic was written in a bracket. I opened the email and it contained a message from the journal telling him that they had approved his essay for publication in their journal. In the thread of their emails, I saw that he'd sent them a message pitching the essay topic to them and even mentioning points that I had made when I tried to defend the first topic to him. He then sent another email with a document attached and the document contained the abstract and short introduction that I had written. I was shocked that he could and would do something like that. He just never struck me as someone who checked a topic I'd come up with just so he'd be the one to write on it. It just didn't make sense. Also, if he wanted it published and his name affiliated, he could have suggested that we both work together and publish with both our names. I went to their house the afternoon of the next day, ready to confront him with what I had found out. You look upset, is everything alright? His wife asked, looking unusually calm, she was normally condescending and outrightly rude. I explained what had happened and she smiled and asked me to wait for her. She was going to wake him up from his nap. I waited for nearly an hour before they both came down. When they finally did, I was going to start talking when my professor interrupted me. I apologize for the misunderstanding. He started. This isn't quite a misunderstanding. I wish you'd told me that. I saw his wife roll her eyes and pause. How much can we pay to make this all go away? What? You're a graduate student earning peanuts from being a TA. Surely a fat check should make up for one silly abstract and an introduction. I noticed that my professor tried to interrupt her but she didn't let him and kept talking. So shall I proceed to write you that check? I nodded yes, pretending to be ashamed, and took a piece of paper from her husband and handed it to me. I was shocked. They already had written the check knowing that I was going to accept it from them. I left their house that day feeling very ashamed. I expected that when I resumed work the next week, my professor would be ashamed of his behavior and offer an apology, maybe even shift the blame on his wife, and declare that he declined the offer to publish in that journal but he didn't do that. He started to behave as though the idea and introductory part were entirely and originally his. I knew I was going to get back at him and his evil wife when one day, he called to ask if I could offer insight on the essay he was writing. My essay. He was essentially asking me to do the whole work. I offered to write the essay for him so he could do the editing and I did. I then compiled the introductory part I had written earlier, compiled it with the body of the essay, and sent it to a random magazine for publishing. The magazine was not an academic one but they were willing to make space for my work. They published the essay just a few days before my professor had his essay published in that journal. Weeks later, the magazine reached out to me informing me that someone else had plagiarized my work and had published it in an academic journal. I revealed what had happened and permitted them to write an article about it. I knew what I had done was going to cost me my teaching assistant job but I didn't mind. I applied to the academic office to have my supervisor changed and that severed my relationship with the professor. The journal found out about what had happened, put out a disclaimer, and gave me credit for my work. That made me very happy and while the school never punished him for his actions, his reputation got soiled because of the article the magazine had written about him and the disclaimer. Now on to the next story. Story 2. My best guy friend just told me he's in love with me. Two days before my wedding. I've been with my fiancé for three years, engaged for a little over a year. My best friend and I have known each other since freshman year of college, we are all in our early 30s. This morning, I woke up to a long as text from my guy best friend that he had sent around 6 am. Basically, it was him pouring his heart out. He said he's been in love with me for years, but always hoped I'd end up breaking up with my fiancé and finally noticing him. He asked me to call off the wedding and run away with him. It said, I needed to tell you before it was too late. I just feel gross. And sad. I have no feelings for him beyond platonic love. I've drafted a response and deleted it, over and over. I haven't even told my fiancé. I don't want him to have to worry about me so soon to our wedding. I know I need to, but I don't know what to do or how to phrase it. What's worse is that he's become my fiancé's friend, too. I'm also pretty pissed that my friend chose such an unfortunate time to cause me such distress. There were so many times over the years he could have just bucked up and told me how he felt. But waiting until right before I'm married? Like I would just cancel my wedding and leave my fiancé because of a goddamn text? I want to tell him to not come to the wedding. I can't trust that he wouldn't try to pull something. I don't even know if I want to talk to him again, but the thought of losing my best friend is heartbreaking. Hell, the thought of not having him at my wedding is really painful. He's put me in an uncomfortable, impossible situation. I wish it wasn't on me to deal with his feelings for him. 
I wish he had either stopped being friends with me when he realized us ending up together would never happen, or had told me a while ago. I don't want to kick him while he's down, but I need to make it clear that I have no feelings, the wedding is still on, and I don't want him to attend. We have been friends for over a decade. I've been crying over this all day. I feel almost disgusted, knowing that this whole time he had ulterior motives. How do I even go about dealing with this? I'm supposed to get married in under 48 hours. Edit, I'll be showing the text to my fiancé after he gets home from his brothers. I won't send anything until he's here with me. Update. My husband, I love being able to say that now, and I got back from our honeymoon yesterday. I turned on my phone and opened the Reddit app and it was still signed into this account, so I had an oh yeah moment and figured I'd post an update. So a lot of people here really helped validate the icky mess of feelings I was having. Thank you for that. Posting here really helped put my thoughts into words. So that night my fiancé got home from his brother's. I let him sit down and then I showed him the text. He read it and I watched his eyes get bigger and expression angrier. Of course, I started apologizing like an idiot and he told me I didn't owe him an apology for anything. We talked and he told me he figured the guy had a crush, but kept it respectful. And really, he had. We were close, but beyond a side hug during greetings and goodbyes, there was no physicality. I even let him read out past messages just to see that there was no emotional affair or me leading him on. I never even vented about my fiancé when we would have arguments because I knew better than to do that. I'd talk to my mom, lol. So my fiancé asked me what I wanted to do. And I said that while it did sadden me, I didn't want him at our wedding. I was afraid that he would try some nonsense. We typed up a very brief message. It said, friend, I'm sorry that you mistook my friendship for something more. The wedding is going to happen, and it'd be best if you didn't attend. To be clear, I let, fiancé, read this message and he stands by my decision to uninvite you. We wanted to make it clear that it was me who wanted him to not come, not just my fiancé. Knowing him, he'd probably claim that fiancé forced me to uninvite him. He read the message and left it on read for a while. I honestly started getting pretty anxious over it and fiancé asked if I wanted to block him. Part of me wanted to, and part of me wanted to hear him out. And when he finally responded, the text was so long that I had to click on it to read it. It was horrible. He called me a liar for leading him on for over a decade, that he hoped my fiancé left me and that we were infertile. It was just horrible thing after horrible thing and I started crying. Fiancé took my phone into the other room while I sobbed. I think he called him, but I'm not sure. What I do know is after about an hour he came back in, handed me my phone back and told me that friend was now blocked on everything, would not be attending, and the best man and my maid of honor knew of the situation and would handle it for me. It was like a weight lifted off of my shoulders, honestly. After reading that message, I really wasn't so sad that friend wouldn't be attending anymore. And our wedding fucking rocked. We had the time of our lives, surrounded by people who loved us and we loved them. It still feels like a dream, to be honest. And if friend tried to show up, I never heard anything of it. I guess that's the update. It's not nearly as dramatic and crazy as what people hoped for, I feel like, but I'm happy.